Nestled next to the Himalayas, Nepal is one of the most beautiful places on the planet, but also one of its poorest. The country has a universal health care system, but limited resources means long waiting lines for medical care, and the COVID pandemic has only exacerbated the situation. Hoping to bring much needed relief, a team of medical staff and other volunteers from Taiwan holds regular free clinics in Nepal and in 2022, it also explored ways to provide follow-up care remotely. Join us as we hear from these selfless volunteers and some of the patients who have been touched by their dedication. Located largely along the foot of the Himalayas, Nepal covers an area of just over 147,000 square kilometers. That's about four times the size of Taiwan. It has a population of about 31 million people who have an average monthly income of 15,000 Nepalese rupees, which is about 3,600 NT. It's one of the poorest countries in the world. This is the public hospital in Nepal's second largest city, Pakara. The hallway is so crowded with patients, you can barely move through it. So you can see this is our cath lab. Uh, by the support of a Rotary Foundation, uh, we managed to have this cath lab at our center. So in total, we have done up to 50 or more, maybe more than that cases. This catheterization laboratory was donated by a group of Taiwanese medical volunteers when they came to Nepal three years ago. And it houses Nepal's most advanced medical equipment. This is the uh, really a sophisticated and state-of-art machine. So I think this is the, the latest machine, not only in Pokhara, all over the Nepal as well. The reason Nepal's public hospitals are so crowded is due to the low cost of treatment they offer. The situation was further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic and the fact most people in the country can't afford private health care. For most people, the only option is going to a public hospital. Because it's a public hospital, so it is more uh, crowded than other private hospitals. Nepalese have universal health care and a family of five pays only 3,500 rupees, roughly 840 NT, every year for access to the system. That's just one-fourth of one family member's salary. In comparison, private hospitals in Nepal are very expensive for locals, as one Nepali explains. It cost around 1,000 per appointment, and after that, for medicines, it will cost in a high range. A 1,50,000 for only going to ICU or ventilator for one day. So that's a high price in private hospitals, but in public hospitals, it's about only 1,000 rupees. At private hospitals, every item of service must be separately built, and the costs are staggering for the average Nepali. Therefore, those who live in rural areas that lack public hospitals or who are economically disadvantaged often choose not to see a doctor, instead letting their condition worsen. For such people, free health clinics run by international teams are particularly necessary. In November 2022, a team from Taiwan covering five medical specialties, including ophthalmology, internal medicine, surgery, dentistry, and traditional Chinese medicine, visited Nepal. The team of 20 medical personnel and 60 volunteer assistants brought a large cache of medical equipment with them. And after arriving in Pokhara, the team set off for the small town of Damal. Most of Nepal's roads are unpaved gravel roads, making for a bumpy ride. After two hours on the road, the team finally arrived at its destination. The Taiwanese medical team held a free medical clinic in Damali for two days and was featured on the front page of the local newspaper. On the clinic's first day, a large number of people showed up for treatment, many of whom were older, reduced mobility patients. I visited many places for treatment, including Kathmandu, but wherever I went, I still wasn't treated properly. In just one hour, the line stretched more than 200 meters. 
Since the local hospital in Damali does not cover ophthalmology, there was an especially large number of eye patients visiting the free clinic. For example, this young boy with bloodshot eyes was brought to the clinic by his father. That's why I come to here. It's uh, suddenly happened. Suddenly happened. Oh, how long? How long? Uh, since yesterday. I just checked him for conjunctivitis using this computer and didn't see any signs of myopia or astigmatism. If he does have allergic conjunctivitis, it may have been caused by the dust in the air here and he may have been rubbing his eyes. Eye discomfort can often be treated by applying eye drops. In Nepal, one of the more common eye conditions is cataracts. This other patient's cataracts were so bad, he didn't even realize the pen he was using was out of ink. As it turned out, the patient suffered from cataracts in both eyes. He was almost completely blind in his right eye, and his vision depended entirely on his left eye. How many fingers? The patient is 64-year-old private school principal, Luxman. Previously, he had also been a part-time teacher and had taught for over 23 years. However, after his vision gradually worsened, Luxman was forced to abandon teaching, which had been a passion of his. Can you see that? Mm -mm -mm. This is... Routine, oh. very difficult. If I am able to see again, I will again start teaching. Not only this, this uh, in management work, I, I will teach again seven years more. Due to the strong ultraviolet rays in the high altitude mountains of Nepal, a high percentage of Nepalese develop cataracts, which may lead to the blindness in severe cases. However, due to the short duration of the visit and a lack of equipment, the Taiwanese cannot perform eye surgery at the free clinic. The rate of cataracts here is very high, and here, there is equipment to operate on cataracts. We recommend he heads to a large nearby city to get the surgery done. The Taiwanese doctors made computer records of the free clinic's eye patients for the first time in 2022. After returning to Taiwan, the records would be used to provide follow-up assistance via telemedicine. Meanwhile, the clinic's doctors were also busy helping patients with internal medicine-related problems. How about here? Yeah, yeah. this together with me? Okay. This man in his 70s told the doctors that he has pain in all four limbs and that he has had the pain for six months already. We gave him a checkup and found obvious signs of tendonitis. It could be a combination of the fact that the terrain here is very hilly and uneven and the fact that he was a paratrooper when he was younger. Now that he's gotten older, he's developed this soreness of the muscles. This man walked several kilometers along a mountain road to be seen by a Taiwanese doctor at the clinic. The man lives on his own at his nursing home. Dining hall. Huh? This kitchen. I really trust the doctors. I didn't tell them anything, but the doctors all knew what was wrong with me. Life is difficult in Nepal's rural communities, especially for those engaged in farming, whose bodies really take a beating. The most common problem is soreness, which occurs both in the joints and the muscles. Since work is so hard on these people who live in the mountains, they develop these problems in the 30s or 40s, which is really too early. Yeah, my uh, body is a pain in the backside. When I'm cutting grass in the cow, I have so buffalo and cow, I cutting grass and I to put in, in here. This time this is crack. The acupuncturists on Taiwan's medical team have also given new hope to the locals. This year, the team expanded to include eight dentists and orthodontists. 
A bench is used in place of an orthodontic chair, and the dentists work away in the outdoor space, filling cavities and pulling teeth. Actually, there are still a lot of problems. Their teeth are in such a bad state that it's very difficult for us to fix them up. They just want us to do something about the pain. After all, their knowledge of oral hygiene is not very good, so we just help them do all we can to help them with their more urgent needs. The team holds a class on oral hygiene, teaching proper technique for brushing. They hope to reduce the chance of tooth decay among locals. <laughs> Meanwhile, a philanthropist that traveled with the team to Nepal has donated 3,000 wheelchairs for use by Nepalese with mobility needs. I'm very happy I had the opportunity to be here today to see our wheelchairs get handed over to those who really need them. I hope for warmer and more enthusiastic exchanges between the people of our two countries. Over the short two days of the clinic, the Taiwanese team handled over 10,000 medical consultations. The clinic this year was a great success. There were a total of 5,184 people who sought medical help with us. But if you count the total number of consultations, it was over 10,000. That's a great deal more than the 6,000 consultations we handled last time. I believe our achievements this time were the result of cooperation between the team and the Nepalese who worked with us. This is a, one of the great, great support, great, great love from Taiwan to the Nepalese friend. I would like to thank from core of my heart. The free clinic privately organized by Taiwanese medical personnel and volunteers provides valuable short-term medical services to people in need. However, another area of focus for the team this year is how to provide patients with follow-up care once the team has left. Today we are holding this free clinic here. We also have to help Pokhara Regional Hospital set up a kidney transplant center. And we have a plan to help them do breast cancer screening through donations and grants. These things can help many people. The medical volunteers say that they look forward to holding many more clinics to both treat Nepalese and to improve their health-related knowledge. Taiwan's advanced medical knowledge and its desire to provide health for all are just two ways Taiwan is showing the world how it can help.